Hello, this is Reverend Dore teaching the science of mind from Sarasota, Florida. Today, we're going to talk about living in the truth. You know, those of you born before wide lapels and leisure suits may remember a program called Dragnet, starring Jack Webb as Los Angeles police detective Joe Friday. This very popular program was broadcast on radio and television in the 50s and 60s, became a cultural icon and the template for all future cop shows. When questioning a witness to a crime, Joe would always interrupt saying, just facts, ma'am, just the facts. Joe usually got the facts, but did he always get the truth? Understanding the difference between facts and truth holds the key to living empowered, free, abundant, and joyful lives that are our birthright. Most of us equate facts with truth, but that's not necessarily the case. You see, facts are the products of our five senses, but our senses often lie to us. In fact, they lie to us a great deal of the time. We've all heard of the several suspects convicted on eyewitness testimony, but were later found innocent due to DNA analysis. The eyewitness was so sure, but the eyewitness was also so wrong. Another example of today's changing facts is found in science. Science gives us a steady diet of facts and broadcasts them as scientific truth, only recant them months or years later as experts replace the old facts with new ones based on new evidence. Remember coffee? Caffeine will kill you! Decaf your life! Oops, not actually. You should drink a couple of cups a day. It's food for the brain, they now tell us, and it even helps prevent dementia. That was great because I love a good cup of coffee. Now I can drink all I want. Eggs, hormone therapy, the list goes on. Can we really rely on science or our five senses for the truth? Consider this. A dog has a sense of smell 20 times greater than a human. A cat's eyesight and hearing are 15 times more acute than ours. When we depend on our rather puny senses for fact and truth, and then filter that data, questionable though it is, through our prejudices, our beliefs, and our cultural mores, no wonder we seldom either get the facts or the truth. What are the facts? Where do they come from? And whose facts are they anyway? What we call facts are, in reality, opinion-based collective thinking. What Ernest Holmes, the founder of Science of Mind, called race thought. We would probably call it collective thinking today. And its cultural bias congealed into widely accepted beliefs. I call them the bathtub ring of other people's thinking. Facts are the residue of collective thought. Facts are precedent. They've been around so long they are seldom if ever challenged. Here's the good news. We, as divine expressions of spirit, are not bound by precedent. Judges and lawyers may be, but we're not. We have a divine license by virtue of the mind, will, and imagination to create a new life story every day when we open our eyes. We set the tone of our lives daily. Nothing outside of us creates our life experience. Ponder this great idea with me for a moment. If you and I are not bound by precedent, then we're not prisoners of our childhood, our culture, or genetic makeup. We aren't fated to have that heart attack just because Dad did, unless we're convinced that it's so. The mind controls the body. By itself, the body does little nothing. No, I don't think we can change height, hair type, or eye color with a prayer or a new way of thinking. However, I do believe that the day-to-day -day reality of our lives can and is altered any time we make a decision, have the will, and muster the discipline and courage to change what we expect out of life and what we believe, say, and think on a daily basis. The facts fade away when we live in the internal truth that goes far beyond mere facts. By living above and beyond the facts, what we are really doing is learning to see the world through the eyes of God rather than through the eyes of humanity. God knows and cares nothing for facts, but God is the truth. When you live in the truth of your being and the truth of the universe and all that is in it, you are living in unity with God. And the truth is that all life is unified with all other life. 
Living beyond the tyranny of the facts is easy to learn, but it's hard to do. You have to have courage to change, but it's worth every bit of the discipline, effort, and tenacity it takes to achieve the free life, the empowered life, the life of conscious oneness with the infinite mind of God. This is a life in which we assume our perfection because we know that that is our truth. We're all created perfect beings by a perfect intelligence we often call God. We realize that from perfection can come only perfection. Why then are we not perfect? Our planet and all that exists were created by the same perfect mind, our higher power. Why isn't our planet perfect? We in our world are not perfect because we do not believe that anything that exists is perfect. We have a deep-seated belief in imperfection. Every day we hear people saying, nobody's perfect. No protection in this world. Well, you just got to play the hand that you're dealt. We not only deny perfection, we embrace imperfection. As Bertrand Russell observed over 100 years ago, God has made us a paradise and only our folly keeps it from being so. Exactly. Really is done unto us as we believe, but not as we wish, hope, or dream. We get exactly what we expect out of life, nothing more or less. Many people whom I counsel share their wishes and hopes with me, but when I dig a bit, I find that they live by the maxim, Expect the worst, but hope for the best. That's a recipe for a life filled with dashed hopes and a lot of the worst. What you expect is what you will surely get. As Job said, my greatest fears have come to pass. Yes, your greatest fears always will come to pass. The reason is you spend so much time focusing on your fears. That's what you're creating. You're speaking your word for your limitations and your fears, not for what you want. Why not make a decision to consciously use this God-given power and get in the driver's seat of your life? God can only work through us on our behalf. If we expect the worst, we can count on it being delivered to our front door right on time because God must deliver to us what is truly in our minds and hearts. God can only mirror what is inside of us. As the Bible says, so within, so without. To me, God has never said yes or no, but always says, right you are to whatever I truly expect and believe. To live beyond the tyranny of the facts, you must first ignore them. You must create a new state of being, a new mindset, in order to create a new reality. This is the meaning of the Bible verse, in my Father's house are many rooms. There are infinite numbers of states of mind that you and I can inhabit at any point in time. Universal mind, the mind of God, is the house and the unlimited states of mind are the rooms. And we have total free will to inhabit any room we want on any given hour or day in our lives. And you know, we're not punished for our choices. God doesn't punish. God governs the universe by law, not by whim or emotion or caprice. The mother of these laws is the law of mind action, better known as cause and effect. Choose whatever room you desire, but be prepared to live with what you find within it. My wife Susan likes to say, when you make your bed, be sure you're willing to lie in it. We make our bed every day with what we say to ourselves, the atmosphere, or dominant thinking of our thoughts, and by our choices. We are always a choice. The only caveat is that you be prepared to live with those choices you know, one last thought. During the time that I worked at the home office of what was then called United Church of Religious Science and now is Centers for Spiritual Living, I had the opportunity to work with and know many of those wonderful people who had been instrumental in assisting Dr. Ernest Holmes in creating and administering his great work called The Science of Mind. I remember being told that Dr. Holmes liked to go out at lunchtime and sit on the tall steps of the old Religious Science Institute building on 6th Street in Los Angeles and chat with the many people who passed by each day who knew of him and his work. He was quite famous in the, all over the United States, but particularly in Southern California. He would be asked many questions about science of mind and was always being asked for advice. Often someone would tell him of a problem or their story, and Dr. Holmes would often say, are you willing to accept the consequences of that way of thinking? If not, change your thinking and change your life. 
He didn't try to fix them, but he challenged them to think a new thought, to change their thinking, speaking, and choices, thereby changing their lives. You and I can do the same thing. You need to know who you are. You need to know that you are loved unconditionally by a universal mind, by God that created all there is. Understand that the God within you and the Most High God are one and the same, and that you are God expressing as you. You are literally a thought in the mind of God, and God experiences life through you and all creation. The difference between you and God is only that of scale. You have the creative power in your life, and God has it in all that exists. You're like a drop of seawater in a vast ocean. You're made of the same stuff, you have the same nature, and you have the same power. Difference only is in degree, not in essence. Next, you have to learn how to use God's law to transform your life. Learn how to pray effectively by declaring that your good is already here, rather than begging for outside favor. Learn how to discipline your mind and spirit to surrender to your highest good and to God. Save time each day to be still. Step away from the hustle and bustle of life. Just be quiet so that you may hear the God within. Learn that thoughts are things and they create your life. Understand that you are what you think, what you believe, and what you expect. When you understand these simple ideas, you can be free from the facts forever. You'll not deny the facts, but you'll know the truth about them, that you're not bound by them. You're no longer bound by precedent, by what they say, by what they want you to be. You are God expressing as you, and you have all the power of the universe at your disposal. You're a champion, never again a victim. You have learned to see the world as God sees everything, through the eyes of the infinite one, the eyes of love, the eyes of abundance, joy, peace, the eyes of God. Till we speak again, God bless and keep you, and so it is.